Folks who don't know, the Free State Project is a movement of voluntary human action where we are trying to concentrate libertarians in the state of New Hampshire. We've got done uh, more in the last decade than every other libertarian movement combined has accomplished in the last five decades. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, libertarians, anarchists, movers, natives, and those on your way, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Free State Live, where you can hear about all the different ways you can live free and thrive in the free state of New Hampshire. First and foremost, time to welcome everyone back. As always, I'm Justin O'Donnell, former libertarian candidate for U.S. Senate, author and host of the Subversive Podcast, back in stylish fashion as always, we have activist extraordinaire and author herself, Carla Garrett, Queen Quill. How are you, Carla? Hi, I am great, and I am officially a blue check. Officially? $8? <laughs> $8. <laughs> or what am I going to say? But I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Took them long enough, right? Yeah. <laughs> and our resident expert on all things New Hampshire, the native tallest Bill, meme, meme lord extraordinaire Bill Barger. How is it, Bill? It's going good. How you doing? Oh, we're doing Glad to be good. here. Glad Carla's back. I, I, I'm, I am starting to love your changing title every week. And uh... I try. I try. <laughs> Some weeks I forget. But almost, <laughs> I almost forgot today. And I was like, oh, what can I do right away? Like right here before we start the show. You got to stay up all night thinking about it? Or do you get to bed around like two or three normally? Like... <laughs> um, I try to batch them out and do like one, you know, like 52 in one week. And then I'm good for the year. There you go. Good for the year. Um, well, we got an interesting topic to talk about tonight. It's one that I thoroughly enjoy. I mean, art, books, podcasts, and we get the growing wave of new media and abundance of new and interesting ways to reach people with the message of liberty all the time. But tried and true, the documentary film remains a classic and has been rising in popularity again the last few years thanks to streaming platforms. And joining us tonight to talk about her experience immersing herself in the Free State community, the director of the upcoming Free State documentary, Renita, all the way from the West Coast. How are you? Hello. Hi. Hi, Carla. Hi, Bill. Hi. Hey. Hi. Welcome Good to, to our you. show. Thanks for having me. So yes. what possessed you to want to make a documentary about us? Hmm. <laughs> well, uh, I made a documentary about the lockdowns in Southern California in 2021, and um, it was very well received. We went into Anthem Film Fest uh, at Freedom Fest, and everybody really liked it, but it's a very heavy documentary. There's crying and there's people's houses on fire, people's businesses <laughs> shut down. So, you know, I just started thinking, well, what can I do as like the antidote to this? What's the white pill to this? And then just free state came into my mind. I don't know where ideas come from, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Had you heard of the free state project before? I was already kind of a free stater at the time. I uh, So that was in 2021. And I owned a house there since 2019 as in an attempt to kind of slowly make my way over or be bi-coastal, you know, but I was still working in LA at the time when I bought the house. But um, <clears throat> I grew up just south of New Hampshire. In oh, you're one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so when I heard about the Free State Project, I was like, well, that's perfect. I can go back home and I can be with libertarians and everything. So um, yeah. What, oh, like, what was your libertarian story? Like, would, were you raised on the knee with this cool idea or like sort of where did you come from? Um, well, my parents were hippies, so. Almost. Think, yeah. <laughs> they were half right. <laughs> right. Um, I think I maybe had like an anti-establishment grounding. Um, my mom also being in like the hippie lifestyle i think she was didn't like wasn't a super strict parent so i think i already had like a anti-authoritarian base um but i was pretty much a democrat like lefty i grew up in massachusetts so everybody there basically Ooh. is and, <laughs> and my mom also is and you know she still is and she pretty much put that in my head but um you know, during 9-11 and everything, I think that opened my eyes up to a lot of things. And 
I w became very anti-war at the time. And then I did vote for our Obama, Obama the first time. And um, not long after, I realized that there wasn't much difference in that regard once he got in. So that was basically There wasn't it. as much hope and change as you were <laughs> yeah. hoping for change. <laughs> not very long into his presidency. I was like, oh, this isn't. Yeah. And I, so WikiLeaks actually was my big like moment of, of I really believed in what he was doing at the time. Like I knew that. And then um, I voted for Ron Paul in 2012, but I didn't even know what libertarianism was oh. probably until like 2015. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, even I voted for Barack Obama in 2008. And oh, okay. like, I, I look back on that. That was the first vote in the presidential election I ever cast was actually for Barack Obama because he promised to close Guantanamo Bay and, and yeah. the war. And at the time, I was still in the army. I'm like, that sounds like a pretty good idea. Uh, in hindsight, he just kind of ramped them up. And next thing I knew, I was stationed in Guantanamo Bay. I'm like, isn't this supposed to be closed? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but no, so you're making this documentary. You've come out to visit a couple times. You came to Porkfest, and then uh, you were here kind of at, in the fall. Uh, what's it been like for you to just uh, kind of immerse yourself as an outsider? Because you haven't moved and just like, join the community you came here yeah. to get an outsider perspective what's that been like for you um well we actually i started in february our very first shoot was porcupine day last february or this past february um and i don't know it's been really cool everyone's like really fun i've got to meet so many different kinds of people and um there it's definitely an eclectic mix of people there <laughs> like, is different than out here for sure. I think maybe because people come from so many different places to there, which they do in LA, but in the Liberty Movement in California as a whole, there's a lot of natives here. So I don't know. It's just a very different mix of people. But um, I really appreciate the support that everyone has given me with the project. I mean, I know it is about you guys, but it's just been really, really helpful. So um, and then the first shoot was, like I said, in February, and then we came for Porkfest, and that was fun, but it was a lot of work. And then this past October, I was there for three weeks, and I really feel like that was a time when I immersed myself more in just like the day to day and got to see the different areas. And uh, so I think I got pretty well acclimated last time. <laughs> Did you find your white pill? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did, uh, did you find the white pill you were hoping to find like yeah for, like for a documentary like are you are you, do you think it's going to come out as the the antidote oh. to the, the lockdown that you were I, looking for? I had my white pill i'm i was looking for drama <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah because it's definitely there and you you need a hook i i work in reality tv so that's that's what i wanted interesting what <laughs> What form has the drama taken? Like, what's the most dramatic thing you've you've encountered so far? So when we first got there, um, you know, we, we did a few interviews, but I was like, I don't, I don't, I have a lot of interviews. Like, I want more action, you know. And then uh, someone let me know that people were going to go because Tulsi was coming to uh, the town hall. So I was like, oh, that'll be cool. And then I got there, and just like the imagery of everything with the big bulldog signs everywhere and the like big uh photos behind the stage like i was like okay this looks really cool and then um carlin yelled at tulsi <laughs> at the end so i was like okay now we're getting somewhere and then i uh i interviewed also this woman i i forget her name is it dolly or dotty she's not a free stater but she was like really amped up too so she was she was really fired up in her interview so it, it'll be good no were you able to get any interviews with any of the like anti-free stater people i mean because no, they really hard to get them to actually sit down and explain what they don't like about the free state project in my experience we see their signs occasionally and they'll hold yeah. a rally and then refuse to talk to anybody they don't know um but like none of that drama you were able to get did you try um so after i left my my dp director of photography josh he came back um for election day. And I think he, he may have got some of that uh, people yelling at each other <laughs> on there, you know, outside the polling stations. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the footage yet, but um, 
I, that's still something I want to get because those people, the anti-free staters, that will be represented in the movie. So it's just all that much better if you can actually talk to them, you know. So yeah, um, and 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 I think legitimately, you know, if they want to go around town besmirching us, then they should be willing to go on the record to sort of explain to folks what 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 they think the issue is. And of course, they don't really want to do that. It's a lot easier sending a mailer out that's just kind of a hit piece right. that's not factually correct that you can't follow up on and all, um, you know, a, a little bit of dirty stuff. But yeah, I'd be happy to help you see if we can figure out you know, if we can find, you know, Zandra, if you're watching this, yeah. please uh, reach out to Rainita. She would love to interview you for uh, for the documentary so we can have you on the record explaining what exactly your issues with the Free State Project are. Because yeah. freedom is not a bad thing. <laughs> well, yeah, and if anyone is listening, I, I, I would portray them fairly. I, I really am not looking to make them look any way that they don't want to look i mean that's not what i like that's not my style really so um i'd like it to be a more evenly balanced movie well i i, I think that's a really big hesitation people have when it comes to sitting for interviews with documentaries and stuff like that is um the uh, somebody else who was doing a documentary about new hampshire politics and wanted to cover the free state project and i was at an event and I was talking to the camera guy and I asked him like, so like, are you guys looking to portray the free state project in a positive light? And his answer was, I hope so. Uh, but I'm just getting the footage and we'll see what the editor comes yeah. up with. I mean, you just got to show what the most interesting thing is no matter what. Right. So. So speaking of interesting things, uh, I believe you have a clip that we are going to take a look at. Is is this about the right time? I think it's about seven minutes long, right? I want to yeah. make sure we leave some time to to chat a little. It bit. is the uh, scene of the Baldock Tulsi town hall mid that happened mid October. So and do you it. want to set it up a little yes. bit more? Um, I would like to because. Um, in the movie, there will be more of a setup. So this scene, the way it is, it's just kind of coming in cold. But, um, you know, Free Stairs found out that Tulsi quit the Democratic Party. And then her first order of business was to endorse Don Bulldog, who is really not in, on the same page on war as she is or says she is. So they decided to go and um, go to the town hall where they thought that there would be questions afterwards. Um, she showed up late, so, you know, <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's, that's pretty much a good setup for it. Roll. I don't think you should even do it in a way that gives him too much of a chance. Don't give him an open ender. Like, what do you think about this? Like, that just lets, that gives him too much room. Right. I have his transcript too from Fox News, and then I'm gonna say, um, you've already proven to us that you don't have the balls to stand up to the military industrial complex when it counts. So why should we vote for you and expect you're gonna do the right thing when it counts next time? Yeah, or you've gotta give him a very pointed question. Like, will you say right now that not a single another dollar should be sent you? He specifically says on Fox News, indirect fires, which is artillery, and I was artillery. Yeah. So it's like, you were just advocating to send me to go shoot at Russians. I'm really interested in how Tulsi reacts to all this. Yeah. Like, we're very prepared for this, I will say. We're like all very, we're here on time. Oh yeah, Dave has a bag of Tulsi shirts. Because yes. I'm recognizing Does anyone have fake mustaches? <laughs> Should we go over? Uh, you can imagine that the car is to go incognito. Uh, this should be fun. I hope that it works. It's a hard thing, right? You, you gotta shout at a politician a couple hundred times just to get one viral clip, you know? I mean, this is it. Nice.
pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. It's just an honor to have Tulsi speak to you about really the political situation here in America. I'm just honored to have her endorsement. And if this doesn't show people here in New Hampshire that Don Baldick will work with people to get things done for you, then I just don't know how else to convince them. <laughs> Freedom is so precious. I know it's precious. I have seen it. We have sent service members overseas time and time again to fight for our freedom because we are a country that has such compassion for the human condition that we send our men and women to help others, whether it is combat operations or humanitarian operations. The military saves more lives than it takes. Our military is being weakened by the ideas of Joe Biden and Maggie Hassan and the rest of them. Our country is marginally capable of doing its job, and that is fighting and winning our nation's wars. The only pronoun that we should be talking about is we the people. Well, thank you, Tulsi. I can't tell you how honored I am to have your support and endorsement uh, in this Senate race. For those of you, I see some Tulsi shirts, I see some familiar faces in the crowd. We spent a lot of time here in 2020. If you saw the announcement that I made a few days ago about why I can no longer call myself a Democrat, I have not seen in my lifetime a point where our fundamental freedoms are more under attack than they are right now. I never would have imagined that in my life we would be at a point where something as fundamental as freedom of speech I really wonder if it'll be there when these kids grow up. This is not some exaggeration. This is the country that we're living in today. We are lacking leadership in Washington in so many ways. Where right now, as we sit here, President Biden continues to push us closer and closer to the brink of nuclear war. We've gotten to a place where people in the news and politicians are talking in such a cavalier way about the use of nuclear weapons. When does this end? When do we stop sending billions of our dollars to go and fund this proxy war with Russia? We need strong leaders in Washington to stand up to this permanent Washington establishment, funded and pay their allegiance to the military industrial complex. We need leaders who know their purpose. And that's what I know about Don Bolduc. It's my pleasure to support my friend General Don Bolduc. I love you all. Thank you for the support. God bless America. Thank you very much. <laughs> they told me there was going to be. Tulsi, why are you supporting a war hawk? Why are you supporting somebody who wants to go into Ukraine? The war hawk is in the White House. No, she is supporting war hawk. Don Bulldog is a war hawk. He said so on CNN. In video. On video. Very Don Bulldog over Maggie Hassan. No, no, great. Don Bulldog is no different than Maggie Hassan. You guys think you're different than Democrats, but you're really not. It's an independent. How dare you? How dare you? You don't listen. I'm a Tulsi Gabbard supporter. Sorry. He said that he wanted the support going all in on Ukraine right now. Here is the transcript of what Don Moldov says. What boggles my mind is the fact that we haven't gone all in on this already. That is what Don Moldov said on Fox News. He wants to go all in on Ukraine right now. And on Fox News, he said that he wanted to go all in on Ukraine. Don Moldov. 
not the world. Not a, All of us. You're really not a Tulsi Gabbard supporter. No. She's not a Tulsi Gabbard supporter. She's a player. Oh, so you're telling me that she's just positioned right now? You're a player. You're not a Tulsi Gabbard I'll tell you what, you're a player. That's a game for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see her on the ball. Yeah, she's like, 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 she's
literally next door at my neighbor's house. And uh, she was very personable. I have to say, like, I liked her energy. I, you yeah. know, I liked the the anti-war sort of message. So it's going to be interesting. You know, this is an interesting clip from my perspective. I mean, there are people here who do like the general, uh, I think, who, who are probably going to be sort of irked and annoyed and you know and 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 obviously there are people who support Tulsi who are going to feel like oh well now the free stater has kind of like jumped her too so so it's an interesting clip I'm, I'm not yeah. even sure how I feel about it to be candid <laughs> I mean if anyone wants to speak to disapproving of that like I'm happy to talk to them too you know well I know at least a couple free staters who are free staters who ended up coming here the route of volunteering and working for Tulsi. Mm -hmm. And because of their exposure to the New Hampshire political community during that election season, ended up finding their home with free staters and libertarians. And a couple of them stayed. And we all know Reed Coverdale, uh, who was a New Hampshire native who had moved away, but when volunteering for the Tulsi campaign, made his decision to move back as a free stater. And they tend to be the ones who've been the most upset about her endorsing and Reed, people who disagree with them. Reed tried to go speak to her at a couple events after, and they he was asked to leave one of them. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, you're getting your drama. Why don't you tell folks uh, who are watching this and stuff, sort of where we are with the movie, where you're heading, what you need, how people can support you. I'm going to assume you're fundraising. You know right. who, who isn't. So, uh, yeah. Lay on us. I, I haven't had the time to even work on fundraising. So I've been funding like the last shoot that we So that's did. my job. <laughs> Number <laughs> one, give money. <laughs> um, but we, we are planning to come for Liberty Forum. So oh, it right. would be nice to, to do some of that before then. Um, and then after that, I'm going to need money to do everything that's required to get it uh, post-production. Editing, I can do myself. That does save us a lot of money. Um, I have been hiring people to do like the more technical side of it. So I've been paying for that too. And then um, after that, there's like color correction, sound mix, all kinds of stuff that I'm going to have to do. So, um, you know, we can work on it as I go. I, my, um, my method so far has just been like, get it shot because these things are happening and we need to get it shot. And then I'll worry about everything else afterwards. But um it's definitely at the point where I can't really put any more of my own money into it and I want to keep going. So um, I thought that I wouldn't be shooting much more after this last one, but I, I think there's still more of the story to tell. I don't want it to go on too long because I can't make like a three hour movie. Um, but you can. James Cameron just released like what a four, a five hour movie. I was like, we could make the the free stater cut, <laughs> just like a. I'm yeah, sure right. they would watch five well, hours. Well, <laughs> that cut. or you know, you're you're making the movie, which becomes the teaser for right. the reality TV show, where we can yeah. really bake the drama <laughs> into it. Uh, so, you know, it's yeah. incremental steps, but but let's make sure we get the uh, the movie done, and then you're thinking submitting it for like film festivals. Anthem, that kind of stuff, yeah, right? Anthem. This is a feature length documentary, like sure. the real deal. Yeah, yeah. It would be kind of like um, that show Catfish started as a documentary and then it turned into a reality show. So Carla's nice. been pitching us on a reality TV show for a long time here. Really? She really wants this to happen. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, did everyone watch that, the anarchist show about the folks down in, in Mexico, right? And I'm like, well, Berwick, with all due respect, you know, came up here, milked me for all the info, took it and went down there. And I was like, well, you know, they're five years behind us, 10 years behind us. Why do they have a show on HBO? We should have a show on HBO. So. Yeah. So, <laughs> at least one season. We need one season. One need season. I'm sure we could bring the drama for that. I'll even stay awake. <laughs> our own network. Yeah. Uh, a, a couple questions for you here in the chat. Ricky wants to ask if you have an ETA for a release. And Nudge is asking if you'd consider doing a flip starter uh, for post-production costs. Flip starter is a crypto fundraising platform. Um, and I, I do know we ha I had up on the thing your website, freestatedoc.com has uh, options where people can donate, uh, whether through fiat or crypto. You do take crypto donations yeah. as well, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. those options are there. It's not a flip starter, but you are taking crypto, and that's awesome. Because I actually haven't heard of flip starter. 
Yeah, a full flip start is on the Bitcoin Cash platform. They do. Uh, okay. It's like a GoFundMe type of a deal built on built right into Bitcoin Cash. Um, a narrow focus to that community to fundraise from, but it's a great tool, and it's great to see alternative tools like that coming out. Um, uh, we also it's did have ETA, one other question. ETA release. ETA release. Yeah. Um, don't forget that. I I don't want to promise anything I can't do. I, I had an idea <laughs> of something I. I wanted to do, but, um, you know, I work a full-time job too, and I have other things going on. So I, sometime this coming year, <laughs> but <laughs> probably in the later part of it, we'll see. That's my new TA on some of my projects too. Sometime in 2023. Uh, we're definitely get at there. least a teaser reel at Pork Fest again. It's something at Liberty Four. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, the thing is, is uh, just to put this scene together, because I actually showed this at um, a fundraising event for um, California Libertarian Party a couple weekends ago. We had like a little film fest in Sacramento. Okay. And, um, but j just to like, so I, there's a process in getting it ready to show. So there, there's like, it's kind of making extra work to show things <laughs> preemptively, but I do want to put a trailer together for pork fest or I, or I'll have more scenes to show. Awesome. Yeah. And Kurt did ask the all important question or statement rather, if she moves to New Hampshire, we'll know the documentary worked. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can get your job making a reality TV show. This yeah. is the plan. <laughs> I, I guess you could say that it worked already because um, after I come for Liberty Forum, I'm going to stay and I will have moved to New Hampshire. <laughs> nice. Again, we got you back again. Yeah. The second um, time. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been trying to move out there for like seven years now, but it wasn't until I started working from home that that became more of an option. And um, yeah, I'm just trying to figure it all out, but I'm really excited. We, we definitely saw that with COVID when a lot of people started to get forced to work from home, it became yeah. easier to move. Mm -hmm. And we had such a big influx of movers over the past two years because of that. And the showing no signs of slowing down, at least so far. <laughs> oh yay yeah. <laughs> yes we are yeah. all very happy i think you're going to be a great contribution to the community and mad skills and these are skills that we need so honestly you know for other other folks who are thinking about moving and all of that i mean th there's uh, we'll use the word eccentric i believe was the <laughs> word at the start um you know there are a lot of characters here the stories yeah. write themselves there's a lot to capture and we're making history what we're doing is historic and as the the world tamps down and freedom dies out in other places we're going to see these pockets of freedom and we are going to have a state that is going to be free because we are here to make that a reality so i'm so happy you're going to be here and like part of the journey yeah. and capturing it for prosperity prosperity <laughs> posterity posterity <laughs> isn't that yeah. your ass <laughs> that's your posterior there we go the english language is terrible carlo we get it <laughs> So, hey, but, it's my bedtime. This is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, great place to cap that off. Stories of people coming back is always one of my favorite mover stories because it's people who intimately know how great New Hampshire is and have gone to see how bad it is elsewhere and still want to come back. And that's why we're excited. Paul in the chat, uh, his wife and I have lived in Costa Rica for 20 years and moving uh, in Gorham. Having been here in the 80s, always vowed to move back one day. We're looking forward to having you guys back as well. And thank you so much, everyone else, for tuning in, watching, helping us. If you want to learn more about the Free State Project, go to fsp.org. Uh, you can check out the mission, everything going on, and some updates from the community. If you want to plan your visit, if you're not here yet, you can get help and connect with Chris and Rebecca, who can help make that happen and get you a custom-tailored visit. And yes, Pork Fest is going to be coming up soon, much sooner than you know. Uh, I got to get the Liberty Forum URLs up here too, but libertyform to nhlibertyforum.com. And 
If you're planning to make a visit, those are two perfect times to do it. But any other time of the year, check out fsb.org slash calendar, the most jam-packed calendar of liberty and libertarian events in the world. There's way too much to do, but try and do as much as you can. If you try and do it all, you'll burn out. And if you (laughs) want to support what we're doing and support the mission of the Free State Project, you can contribute at fsb.org slash give and set up a one-time or recurring donation. And remember, the Free State Project is a 501c3 charitable nonprofit so you get to get your tax money back and spend it where it's wise, not where Uncle Sam sends it. And Kevin's not here, but Kevin would kill me if I didn't mention it. Join the Discord at discord.gg slash FSB to talk with movers and prospective movers and people making their plans every day. They have daily voice chats and video hangouts in that Discord server uh, where you can get connect with your community before you even get here. And if you want to learn more about Renita's project and her film, freestatedoc.com including how you can help out anybody else anything else you want to leave off on bill carla donate donate to the documentary donate to the movie it's going to be awesome it's not voluntary it's the only thing that's not voluntary (laughs) (laughs) awesome well thank you everybody for tuning in and until next time be free cheers I don't believe in destiny I just do what's best for me Don't listen to my enemies They're just full of jealousy Yeah, this legacy You gon' see what's left of me You gon' see success in me You ain't seen the rest I just wanna be the best at what I know Better than the rest, just watch me grow Put me to the test and watch me go This is my quest, I'ma make it known They call me obsessive, oh I know Call me selective with my notes Call me aggressive with my flow Call me offensive even though Joey ain't gonna lie